I'm Dr. Michael Weiner. I'm the principal investigator of the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative, which we call ADNI. ADNI is the largest project aimed at understanding the progression from normal aging to mild memory problems to Alzheimer's disease. It involves more than a thousand subjects who are recruited at 57 sites throughout the United States and Canada. The subjects include completely normal, healthy people, patients with mild memory problems we call mild cognitive impairment, and patients with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. What we want to show you in this video is the various steps that occur as a subject goes through the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative, or ADNI, project. I'm participating in this study myself as a subject because I want to assure you that it's an enjoyable project to be involved with and then that the risks are extremely low. When a subject becomes part of this study, there are a series of steps or procedures which they would undergo. The first, and you could argue the most important, is the consenting process. In the consenting process, the subject is explained the study fully. They're told everything that's going to be done and how long things will take. They're explained all of the area's risks, although the risks are not very uh, serious, but there are some minor risks associated. They're explained the benefits, and then in the end, the subject has to sign what we call informed consent, which permits the uh, scientists to uh, do these procedures. Once we have informed consent, then the subject is asked a wide variety of questions. Some relate to simple things like age and gender and family history of Alzheimer's disease. Others might involve daily activities or questions about memory, various functions, questions about mood. Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you depressed? So in other words, we want to have a complete picture of each individual and what their capabilities are and what their past history is, what their education is, for example. Then we draw blood because we use a blood test for a wide variety of measurements. Another thing we get here in ADNI is we get genetic information. We take your DNA and we analyze it and measure the various genes. And the purpose of this is to see uh, to what extent genetic risk participates in the development of Alzheimer's disease. Then we do the lumbar puncture. The purpose of the lumbar puncture is to obtain information on the chemicals that are surrounding the brain because there's a layer of fluid that surrounds the brain and this fluid has chemicals in it which relate to Alzheimer's disease. The only way we can obtain these chemicals is by doing a lumbar puncture in which a needle is inserted and draws out the cerebrospinal fluid. There's a little kind of a pinprick when they put the Novocaine back there under the skin, and after that, I really don't feel a thing, and I'm always a little surprised when they tell me it's over, because I didn't realize that they had really even done it. We do MRI scans and PET scans of the brain to measure changes that occur in the brain during this progression from normal aging to Alzheimer's disease. MRI means magnetic resonance imaging. So the imaging is an image of the brain. The magnetic is the fact that the MRI machine consists of a very big magnet. The beauty of MRI is that it's completely non-invasive. It does not use x-rays. It does not use anything that is hazardous in any way. But it's a scanner. That is, you go into the scan room after you've been screened for metal, and they lie you down on this table and it's reasonably comfortable with a pillow. And then after you're properly positioned, you go inside the magnet and you lie there for a while. I usually go to sleep at that point. And uh, the procedure is not that long for this study. It's probably on the order of about a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. And the time goes by quickly and then they pull you out and you're done. A PET scan, PET stands for positron emission tomography. It's a different kind of scanning than MRI. In PET scanning, we inject a radioactive compound into the vein of the subject, and then there's a scan of the radioactivity. It's radioactive sugar that's injected into the subject, and we get a picture of where the sugar in the brain is being taken up. Healthy brain takes up a lot of sugar. Brain that's diseased, especially by Alzheimer's disease, takes up less sugar. So we can see a pattern in the brain where there's reduced sugar uptake, and that gives us information about the progression of Alzheimer's disease. 
with amyloid PET scanning, the radioactivity sticks to the amyloid. So we have a scan of the amount of amyloid that's in the subject's brain. Some people think that amyloid is a causative factor in Alzheimer's disease. That's still being worked on. But we know it's a marker of Alzheimer's disease. We're now starting ADNI-3, and we're adding a very exciting new measurement called Tau-PET. Tau-PET is a PET scan similar to the other PET scans in which a radioactive substance is injected and you lie in the scanner. Tau is a protein that spreads in the brain and damages nerve cells. This is a very exciting way to track the progression of Alzheimer's disease. I'm participating in this Tau PET scanning project, just like I'm participating in all other aspects of the project as a subject. The amount of radiation that you get from this PET scan, in fact, these three PET scans, is very small when you compare it to the amount of radiation that we get just on a daily basis. We use neuropsychological tests to measure the ability of people to think there's all kinds of thinking. There's mathematical thinking, there's language thinking, there's musical thinking, there's problem solving. And we have a variety of neuropsychological tests that people take to remember different things, solve some problems, draw pictures, do things quickly. And all of these tests are a measure of how well the brain is working. Some tests appear to be quite difficult and people can feel frustrated dealing with these tests but they're purposefully difficult. I find some of these tests incredibly difficult to perform, and I think my brain is working okay. The specific value to you is that any significant medical condition that might be detected would be reported to your doctor and to you. Sometimes we find things that can be corrected and they weren't picked up in the routine medical exams. It's completely private. It's between the patient and the study. So all of the information is kept completely confidential. And there is just no way that information from the study would ever affect future insurance coverage or future medical care. I just want to emphasize that the entire procedure is of extremely low risk. We're interested in people who are completely normal and healthy, people who have mild memory problems or what's called mild cognitive impairment, and people who have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. So the whole range of uh, people over the age of 55 is considered in this study. I really hope that you'll strongly consider joining the ADNI project as a participant, as I have. You know, I have a mother with Alzheimer's disease, and I'm also a scientist involved in trying to develop effective treatments for Alzheimer's disease. By all measures, ADNI has been a huge success. It's the largest project funded by the National Institutes of Health on Alzheimer's disease. It's been going on since 2004, and over 1,500 people have participated, and now we're trying to recruit another 600 people across the country. This is a very exciting project. It's a very important project towards developing effective treatments for Alzheimer's disease. And I hope that you will join or encourage your friends and family to join ADNI as participants.